Here's an interesting little macro lens sent to me by Seven Artisans a few months ago. This is the new updated Mark II version of their 60mm f2.8 macro lens for APS-C mirrorless cameras. I'll be honest, Seven Artisans was not on my radar as a lens manufacturer before being sent this lens. Probably because they make lenses exclusively for mirrorless systems, and I'm still very much a Pintax SLR guy. As you'll notice here, this is a little lens, and pretty lightweight too, at a bit over 360 grams with the caps on. Speaking of lens caps, the front cap is a nicely branded metal one, but is only held on by tension and falls off really easily. The rear cap is plastic and branded with the lens mount. Despite being so small and lightweight, the metal body gives the lens a nice solid feeling. Note this is a completely manual lens with no contacts or coupling. The lens mount itself is shiny, ridged metal. The focus ring is smooth, and I personally like the short travel, only requiring a little twist to focus from infinity down to the max magnification of 1x. Out towards the tip of the lens is the aperture ring, which is smooth and declicked, but I find it's too close to the focus ring and easy to bump, accidentally changing the aperture. So I'm constantly fiddling with it to make sure I'm where I want to be. At least it feels nice, and the nine aperture blades make for pleasant round bokeh. But most importantly, is the lens sharp? To test this, let's shoot the eye of Hideo Noguchi on this 1,000 yen banknote. Wide open at f2.8 and 1 to 1 magnification, center contrast and sharpness are pretty good. With things improving marginally by f4, looking great at f10, and not surprisingly pretty soft at f22 due to diffraction. For comparison, this performance seems similar to the Laowa 60mm macro, if a bit cooler in color temperature. I'm using the original Canon EOS M body with this lens, a bit dated but incredibly lightweight, with my whole setup being a bit less than 800 grams. For comparison, the Laowa 100mm macro is 730 grams alone, and my usual Pintax rig weighs in at a painful 2,200 grams. And it's for this reason I've been using the little mirrorless setup more this summer in the field. Very lightweight. Maybe not the best design, but here's a simple diffuser I made years ago to use with this little Mikey flash. It hotspots a little and catches the wind like a sail, but it's lightweight, packs flat, and gets the job done. Sometimes, to soften the light a bit more and fill in the shadows, I'll use this bounce card seen here which really came in handy while shooting this brilliant paraphytopus female with her iridescent metallic scales. A quick note that all macros seen in this video were shot in situ of the animals as found in their native habitat. I prefer to shoot this way as it offers valuable insight into the natural history of these animals, their behavior, host plants, associated species and more. This spring and summer, Oklahoma got a decent amount of rain, making for wet woods, even submerging some local trails. Here's a cute tree frog, one of many I've spotted just resting on leaves on wet days. Here's a beautiful snail I shot at about one to one and didn't even notice their little springtail buddy here until getting home and reviewing shots. I don't know if there's a relationship between the two, but 
I shot the snail over a period of about 10 minutes or so, and the springtail was always on the snail or sticking close. Not only is the occasional downpour a relief from the heat, with an umbrella I can keep on shooting and take advantage of the sometimes increased activity of a wet day. This wolf spider mother was occupying a hole in a fallen, mossy tree, holding her egg sac tightly under her abdomen. And although she was skittish, I was able to sneak in gently enough to take a low-angle portrait of her at the opening of her retreat. Nestled down into some thick moss, this pleasing fungus beetle had a few mites on board. I used a white trash bag laid across my lap to bounce a bit of light back up on these wonderfully hydrated lichens on a fallen branch. Here, a group of Aphanagaster ants may be attempting to pull apart and kill a worker from a rival colony. Consistently targeting wet or flooded areas this summer has led to some interesting observations I'm usually not looking for, like this beautiful water snake who wanted nothing to do with me, and this impressively sized Dolomedes fishing spider on a trail sign. Who was cooperative enough to allow for a portrait showing off her eye arrangement and subtle dark blue clippius. On the water's surface, uh, another species of fishing spider, Dolomedes triton. This huge Dobson fly did not want me grabbing the plant to stabilize it for a photo. I'm not sure how they came to lose one of their mandibles, but someone on iNaturalist suggested maybe a bird attack. I've found the bokeh of this lens to be quite pleasant and soft-edged, with even complex out-of-focus areas rendered smoothly, uh, encouraging me to shoot more natural light macros, composing dreamy, shallow depth of field shots. Although, of course, I can squeeze more detail and freeze the action with a flash and stopping down the lens a bit more. With a lightweight macro setup like this, I find myself spending longer in the field, less encumbered by the weight of my camera on the hot days, more willing to stick around and go slow. A slower pace often reveals things I maybe would have walked by if I was in a rush or wanting to give up, tired of lugging around a heavy rig with sweat in my eyes, clouds of mosquitoes whining in my ears. Now, macro lenses may not come to mind immediately for landscape or video work, and the shot here is a little bit shaky, but I found the focus breathing to be minimal, allowing for some nice focus shifts for video work, and the overall sharpness of the lens makes for some really nice landscapes, although I find myself noticing a bit more, although not a lot of, chromatic aberration and purple fringing this way with more in-focus bits towards the periphery of the image.
This chromatic aberration isn't too bad though, and can be easily remedied in Camera Raw, this remove chromatic aberration option. Sometimes I'm forced to shoot far away non-macro shots of animals with whatever lens I have on. And thankfully this lens is very sharp, allowing me to crop in a bunch. And with a higher res, more modern camera, I bet one could squeeze even more detail out of it. One-to-one -one magnification is probably sufficient for most folks. Going beyond that in the field comes with a whole slew of challenges and difficulties. But if you've got an older, noisier camera body like me, or simply don't like cropping a bunch for really small subjects, you may find yourself wanting more magnification out of this lens, especially with Laowa offering so many nice two-to-one macro options. Thankfully, with a step down or a step up ring, you can easily attach whatever close up filter you like. In my case, I really like the Raynox 250, a relatively cheap and high quality auxiliary lens, which gives me a bit more magnification even if I lose infinity focus with it on. Additionally, I like this little groove it gives me, making attaching some flash diffusers a little easier. Like this super cool Cygnus Tech diffuser kindly sent to me by Brendan James on Instagram, which attaches around the lens with a little elastic band, and the Raynox's groove keeps that band pretty snugly in place. The diffusing medium wraps around the subject like a little bonnet, making for some very soft light. I haven't used it a lot, and I'm saving some more in-depth thoughts for a future video on diffusion, but so far I've been really pleased with it. As you can see here in the eyes of this Phidippus Claris I shot with the diffuser and the Raynox, there's no hot spot and the light is spread very evenly, which is great for shiny beetles, like this leaf beetle on a sunflower. This combo of the Cygnus Tech diffuser and added Raynox to the Seven Artisans has become my late summer macro setup of choice. Blending in beautifully with the surrounding oak leaf litter, I was surprised to spot this little pygmy rattlesnake enjoying a bit of sun in the woods. I'm not an experienced herper and admittedly pretty ignorant about them, so I approach slowly and carefully, fingers drawn behind the diffuser and she never even stirred from her cozy spot in the sun. All right, to wrap things up, let's go over some key points about this lens. The first thing that comes to mind is just how small and light it is. This has honestly changed the way I shoot this summer, as opting for a lighter weight mirrorless setup has made spending more time outdoors less of a burden. I can't overemphasize how valuable a lightweight macro setup is when you're out sweating in the sun for hours. I also appreciate the simplicity of it too. No shake reduction, no autofocus, no electronic coupling. These things are nice, but they just add weight and cost and are not necessary to take nice macros. 
Weather sealing might be nice, but that's an unrealistic expectation at this price point. And you can just use an umbrella if you want to shoot in the rain. It's adequately sharp and optical flaws seem minimal. I'm pleased with the image quality overall and think the lens would really shine on newer mirrorless bodies. Uh, the 60mm focal length is a sweet spot for me too. Just short enough that my diffuser can get out and around subjects easily and just long enough that I don't have to get so close to subjects that I scare them all away. As for complaints, I have a few, but they're relatively minor gripes. The aperture ring is in a weird spot and easy to accidentally move. Uh, the lens cap refuses to stay on the lens and the max magnification of 1x feels a little basic or underwhelming with so many nice 2x macros on the market right now. Um, if anything though, the lens has got me more excited about mirrorless setups and little lenses. I'm curious now how it compares to the Olympus 60mm macro and some of Laowa's smaller mirrorless oriented lenses. So, in summation, it's a sharp, small, lightweight, and inexpensive macro that would pair well with a modern mirrorless body. To learn more, check out 7artisans.com. And if you'd like, follow me on Twitter at Thomas Shahan. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more upcoming macro stuff.